we are called to be holy. We are called to be saints. We are called to live in the promise of Jesus. We're called to be everything that God has ordained us to be. But here is an issue. How is it possible? How is it possible to live as Jesus wants us to live when the standards are so high, when the expectations are so incredible? You see, it's not only about obeying the commandments, it's about even the thought process. So we can go to hell according to the scripture even by thinking the wrong thing and dwelling on the wrong things. But do not despair, you see, because this is where Jesus comes in. He comes in to save us. So he sets a standard by the Old Testament, which was to obey the Ten Commandments. But Jesus says, hey, it's not about the Ten Commandments. It's not about you achieving holiness by obeying laws, but it's simply by you cooperating with my grace, with my strength. Now, as a priest, I hear confessions, and very often... So many people come in, and I'm not disclosing anything or disclosing any confessional secrecy here, but so many times when I go in, and the first thing that sometimes the penitent says, they make the sign of the cross, and they say, Father, I'm not really a bad person. I never really killed anybody. And that's fine. That's fantastic. Good on you, mate. Good, good on you that you never killed anybody. It makes me feel a little bit consoled in the confessional with you right here, right now. But... The point is, it's not about what you didn't do or how good you are, what you've achieved, but the smallest things that we do, a lustful thought, a thought of anger is enough to draw us down, to take us away from the grace of God. And this is why we need to cooperate with the grace of God. It, this is why we need to ask Jesus to help us. This is why we need the presence and the power of Jesus to get us to heaven. It's not your might. It's not your power. But at the same time, you need to recognize your finiteness. Not to recognize what you didn't do, but recognize your bad thoughts. Recognize that you have done wrong things. Recognize that you are weak and go to confession. Confess those sins. Not the things that you didn't do, but confess the things that you did do, knowing confidently that God is there to save you, that God is there to redeem you, that God is there to give you eternal life. But it starts with surrender. It starts with recognizing that we are sinful, we are broken, and then we give this sinfulness, this brokenness to a Jesus who died on the cross to accept them. Do not despair, do not be afraid, but just stop wherever you are, even at this moment, and say, Jesus, have mercy on me, a sinner. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me, a sinner.